Hi, I would like to talk to you about what to do in your fourth trimester as far as exercise and functional movements um, to one, get stronger, and two, to protect your pelvic core. So from weeks zero to two, you really want to rest. You just ran a marathon, whether it was a vaginal birth or a cesarean. Most normal people don't run marathons back to back. So in week zero to two, I want you to rest, bond with your baby, drink water, take little walks around the house, maybe do ankle pumps, move your legs. Don't be totally stationary, but it's the time to rest. After that, and during that period, you want to start doing what's called functional movements. Functional movements are the same type of movements that you would do with a gym. You're going to think about your pelvic core, but this is the way that you're going to move around your house. It's going to help how you're going to pick up your baby, how you're going to clean, how you're going to cook. If you do your functional movements postpartum well, you will get stronger. If you start doing them incorrectly, you can actually get hurt in this fourth trimester again because you have... You don't have a core, your belly is still really lax, your pelvic floor is lax. You also have ligamentous laxes, laxity. So do you remember when in your during pregnancy you were really loosey-goosey? It's so that the pelvic um, pelvis can open up. You still have systemic joint laxity the whole time postpartum period, the whole time you're breastfeeding, and up to a year post breastfeeding. So if you've ever had a friend who's skiing and doesn't have an ACL and it hurts, that's kind of how your whole body is. So you want to really think about having good mechanics. So the first thing that you do is you think of everything from knee height up should be a squat. Again, we talked about the pelvic core muscles, so I'm going to incorporate those pelvic core muscles when I'm moving. So what you're going to want to do, everything from the knee heights up is a squat. So if I, the average person squats about 300 to 600 times per day. So if I told you to go to the gym right now and squat like this, it's obviously going to hurt you, right? It's going to hurt my knees. Again, with that balloon, if I'm doing this, I'm squishing my balloon and there's a lot of downward pressure on my pelvic floor and I'm hurting my back. Or if I told you to go do 300 squats, you know you're supposed to stick your butt out, right? And in this way, I'm loading my glute muscle, which is a big pelvic core muscle. I'm not loading my belly, my back, or my pelvic floor. So everything from knee height up is a squat where you're sticking your butt out and coming up. So if I wanted to lift up baby, I'm gonna inhale down and then exhale and squeeze my pelvic floor. I'm tall enough, every time I wash my face, I could either do this, or I can stick my butt out, brush my teeth, stick my butt out, get stuff out of the laundry machine. Those are all squats, and again, that's why you get a strong glute muscle, you protect your pelvic floor, and you kegel and TA on the way up. If you need to get stuff off of the ground, you can do what's called a Romanian deadlift, so, or a golfer's lift, and it's all light stuff. So this is toys, tissue paper, I'm gonna come down here, and again, I'm loading my hamstring and my glute, and then I'm gonna exhale and come up. If you need to get heavier things off the floor, like your baby, you can either do a squat or a lunge. So a squat is just gonna be here. I'm gonna come down, and again, you can see I'm not squishing my balloon. There's no pressure down on my pelvic floor. I'm gonna pick up baby. Exhale, Kegel as I come up. Or you can do what's a like a lunge here, pick up baby, exhale, keep going, and come up. And then that way I'm getting good quad muscles, hamstrings, glutes, protecting my pelvic core. From weeks two to six, you want to continue doing those functional movements, continue doing the Kegels and the TA exercises. And then we're gonna have a link. We have a link on the website for you to look at your exercises. And these are safe exercises to do postpartum for most people. I can't say that for everybody. If you have huge injuries, huge, uh, something has gone on, it might not be safe. So if there's something that in there that hurts, it's not healthy for you. Other than those exercises, in the time period from weeks two to six, you wanna think about going for walks. Walking is one of the most healthy things that the human body can do. It's really good postpartum. What you want to think about during walking is, do you remember in the third trimester how you did the third trimester waddle? You want to get rid of that and start actually rotating your trunk. So you should have your sternum rotate two inches off center. 
So if you wear your baby, that's an easy way to get that rotation. And I want you to pump your arms. If baby's in a stroller, have one hand on the stroller, pump here for about five minutes, one minute, and switch sides. So you get that trunk rotation back. What dictates healthy exercise versus unhealthy exercise? Because there's a difference. Healthy exercise, one of the things you want to avoid is what's called postural muscle fatigue. Postural muscle fatigue, we've all been on like a six hour mountain bike ride, right? And you start like this, string on top of my head, I feel really healthy. And then maybe three hours in, you kind of feel dumpy, but you keep going. This is postural muscle fatigue where I'm hanging on my ligaments. It's a very dangerous postpartum because you don't have a core and you have that ligament dyslaxity. So if you're going for a walk and you start feeling yourself dump down into that postural muscle fatigue, that's when you rest, you drink water, take a break, or that's when exercise stops for the day. And it's going to change according to how much baby sleeps, how much energy you have. Um, the other thing that dictates between healthy exercise and unhealthy exercise is, is my pelvic core with me? So let's say in that link I'm telling you to do an exercise or you're lifting something. Do I feel my Kegel muscles contracting with me? That's in the healthy exercise range. Do I feel a bulge or I can't feel my pelvic floor muscles? That's in the unhealthy. So you always wanna make sure your pelvic core muscles are functioning with you. At six weeks postpartum, the current recommendations is that you see a pelvic core therapist. I'm currently the only one in town and I'm, I'm actually certified as a rehabilitation certification and there's only about 350 of us in the United States. So I suggest you take advantage of my services. The beautiful part of it is insurance pays for it um, if you've met your deductible. And if you've had a baby in this calendar year, you've met your deductible. And a pelvic core therapist's job is to say, this is what's happened um, during your pregnancy. This is safe movements, this is unsafe movements, and trying to make sure that you get back to running, climbing, working safely to protect your pelvic core. Women in Europe get um, postpartum visits and prenatal visits with pelvic core therapists and their outcomes are way better than ours. So this program is a part of um, preventative medicine for you because what I don't wanna see is that you come into my clinic 10 years from now with something that we could have fixed really easily postpartum. Again, my number is on all these sheets. I want you to contact me if you have questions on any of this stuff. I'm very passionate about making sure that women get back to their previous level of function.